On to education. Uh, most of the focus this year was on more spending, uh, on more funding of education, and of course Common Core was a very controversial bill. It eventually died. But also, even after the constitutional amendment for charter schools passed so overwhelmingly, even a few modest efforts to expand school choice programs failed. And so you're going to have a lot of kids that are going to be left out in the cold and going back to their schools uh, without these school choice options. What, what explains that, Eric? Well, there's tremendous demand for school choice. I mean, there's just no, you, you can't deny that. Um, let's take the uh, tax credit scholarship program. <clears throat> I'm assuming everybody's familiar with that. I know, Lisa, you're very familiar with it. Um, thank you for your work, by the way. Um, that program, the cap, was hit in 22 days <clears throat> this year. You have a full year to donate to the program. In 22 days, the cap was taken up. That meant that some SSOs were not likely to have enough money to even fund the scholarship students that they were currently committed to. Not to mention that the SSOs that I know about have waiting lists that oftentimes extend beyond the number of kids that are actually in the program, right? Um, charter schools. I was at Ivy Prep in Gwinnett yesterday, Ivy Preparatory Academy, which uh, we've done some studies of their program and it's just one of the best in the state. Um, they have example after example of best practices. They're on a campus that basically is a uh, converted three-story office complex, suburban office com complex surrounded by concrete parking lots, as you would expect. So we're there to talk about school choice to families in the area and explain to them the other options that they have because basically Ivy Prep doesn't have any spaces <laughs> most of the time, depending on what grade you're trying to get in there. Uh, in. Um, so while we're talking, I find out that Ivy Prep's per pupil allotment uh, each year, they're a state commissioned school, basically, is $1,500 less annually per student than a traditional public school uh, in Gwinnett County. Not only that, but they have to pay rent for their facility, and that's $40,000 a month at that one campus. Um, what does that mean? Well, they cut back on all kinds of things that you and I probably take for granted with a, with a school, like a place for the kids to go out and play. They play soccer out in the parking lot, right? They, do their, they were doing exercises when I left out in their parking lot. I, I applaud them for working around and working with what they have, and it's amazing to see what they're able to accomplish. Uh, but it really shouldn't be that way, right? These are charter schools. I'll say this every day until I'm dead. They're public schools, <laughs> right? Uh, they don't, they're not able to be selective in who they choose. They take everybody. Ivy Prep in, in Gwinnett County, which people think of as suburban and largely white, they have by far a majority-minority uh, cohort of kids. That's who they serve. But they exceed well beyond many that you would expect, right, of your Cobb County schools even. Um, get off my soapbox and just say that on that front, this session, we, we had the opportunity to expand both the tax credit program uh, and do something for charters. There were two bills on the tax credit program. One would have just raised the cap on the current program. I think the, it would have topped out at 100 million. It's at about 58 now. Uh, that didn't go anywhere. That was uh, Representative Earl Earhart's bill. The other bill would have created a separate tax credit program that just was for corporations to donate to. Uh, would have created a $25 million bucket for corporations to donate to. Uh, that also went nowhere, despite the demand. Uh, on the charter front, there was a bill that it was part of an, a really an omnibus cleanup bill in education that would have done a lot of things, but really one was that it would allow charter schools to use unused and vacant public school facilities. Where is the controversy in that? Unused, vacant. Um, so, uh, to me, those were, those were really the big ones. It, it also had a provision, that bill, that would allow really high-performing charters to replicate quicker. They could open new charter schools faster without having to go through all the bureaucracy that's currently in place for charter schools. Um, 
that also didn't go anywhere. Which is right here. Exactly. I mean, we are surrounded, it seems like, uh, not surrounded here, but in the country, Indiana, Florida, Louisiana. I mean, these are states that have made uh, tremendous leaps in education choice and because of that performance that we're just not able to live up to. And I know Georgia's doing well, it seems like, economically, uh, or that's what we're, we're told. But I wonder, as long as our education system pr produces 49th, you know, rankings of 49th, 48th uh, in achievement, how long we can, we can hold this up? I mean, I don't know how long the climate and being a transportation hub and all the rest of it is going to keep us at the forefront economically until we get our, unless we get our educational system in line. Uh, so. Uh, I was just going to add one quick thing to that. Uh, Georgia was once a leader on this front nationally. Um, I saw a publication just yesterday ranking our charter school laws uh, toward the middle of the pack with, an, with a grade of C. And it's not one of those, you see some of these rankings and everybody gets a C or a D or an F. Now there, there were some A's given uh, to several states, the, the ones that Eric mentioned and others. Um, and, and I can say as someone who went through a charter school lottery myself for my child recently, uh, 240 kids applying for 50 spots in kindergarten in Buckhead, which already has some pretty good public schools as, as, as they go in this area. That's the kind of demand that's out there. Um, and, and we're simply not meeting it. And, and to, to miss an opportunity to take even some small steps forward this year was, was, uh, was disappointing.